Hey there, Karen here with Whiskey Sour, and it's raining again in Los Angeles. Can't believe it. We've had so much rain. Uh, flooding. Tons of flooding. I, I'm always surprised at how a state that is surrounded by the ocean does not know how to deal with water. <laughs> it's kind of scary. The uh, All the drains, you know where it says this drains to the ocean? They don't want you to dump garbage there? Full of garbage. And so then when the rain happens, the streets just get full of water. And of course, all the forest fires have unfortunately been causing mudslides uh, because all the landscape has been stripped down. So when the rain comes, there's mudslides. Um, so we're just getting pummeled pretty hard here. And the state is already economically suffering. And so just, you know, more costs and more costs and more costs. It just seems like the state's just going in a hole that way all the time. So it'd be nice just to have it let up a little bit. You would think that a place that has Hollywood, you know, one of the most touristy places in the world would be richer than it is. But with all these catastrophes, it's really difficult you know, for the state to get ahead. So that's what's going on over here. <laughs> Lots of good news. I know you guys in the East Coast have been pummeled with snow. I really miss the snow. Uh, I, I don't like traveling in it that much, but it's, uh, it's certainly fresh and makes you definitely feel alive. I wrote a blog today called, Do You Feel Guilty for Missing Their Pain? I had an email from a friend on Facebook, and I want to read you the email, and then I'll read you my response. Uh, just so you guys know, uh, again, I'm not a psychologist, and I don't have answers. I have opinions, um, and I'm always happy when somebody asks me my thoughts on something because it means they see something in me where I might have a little bit of experience I can share. And if I can share with the hopes of just helping somebody, that's awesome. So that's, I take it more as an opportunity just to help. Her email said, do you ever feel that tug of war of focusing so much on one person in the community, a friend, whatever, that you might be missing something? Sometimes I feel like I'm divided between making a small difference in a lot of people's lives and making a big difference in one person's life at the moment. Does that make sense? I will feel good about what I'm doing for others and then suddenly I come across someone that I can see feels that I have totally missed their pain. I admit that I sometimes do or maybe I make a judgment call on who needs me the most of the time. I don't know. I'm just a little confused and maybe a bit overwhelmed. I know that you can relate to. That question is a classic case of a heart that has grown three sizes in one day. Not that you're the Grinch. <laughs> it's just uh, people who their hearts are so much bigger than them generally feel this way. And uh, people who are heartless or have no compassion would never even bring something like this up. They would just be like, yeah, you got problems, we all got problems, whatever. <laughs> and did like my little voice there for people. <laughs> uh, so you should feel really good about how loving you are. I used to feel a tug of war like this. And yes, I miss things constantly, all the time. And I feel horrible that I do, constantly. Uh, this person had to tell me about one of our friends who was having a baby. I totally missed that. So congrats uh, uh, to your baby, Deborah. She's a little girl. Awesome. I used to make an effort to focus on one person because my mother used to tell me that sometimes going after the one who is hurting is better than trying to affect the masses. Sorry, I have massive allergies going on. Um, it's She said it more in a context of how a church operates, but I, I took that to just, you know, that's kind of in society sometimes we worry about you know building this great big thing and we forget about the ones who are hurting uh our friend here mentioned i feel like i am divided between making a small difference in a lot of people's lives and making a big difference in one person's life what i have done uh that's worked for me i don't know if it'll work for you or not but I'll, you asked me so i'm answering uh, i've given myself permission just to be human you know i i also make sure that everybody knows i'm not perfect and that I don't dig nor deserve being on some pedestal. So if people understand that you're just like them and hurting and everything, then uh, there's, there shouldn't be that kind of uh, uh, guilt that happens, I don't think. When I decided that my job or resume didn't cover superhuman abilities, I could breathe again knowing that I can only do what I can do. And it's uh, when I say that I make sure people understand that, the people who are really, really super cool um, don't really need that reminder. But I say it only because I sometimes feel that it will make people um, calm down a bit and not get quite as offended. 
that's more why I say it in true honesty. Uh, so, da, 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 da. oh, what I try to do is I go directly to where I'm called and what makes sense to me at that time, rather than joining some uh, club or a group or an advocacy group or uh, some right civilization or something. I I try not to be too much of a spokesperson for a certain charity or certain cause. Uh, because I try to keep myself really pliable and I don't feel the same sense of division between what motivates me because instead of me asking myself uh, if I should be making a small difference in a lot of people's lives or a big difference in one person's life, I just simply do what makes sense to me at that moment in time and I basically go where I'm spiritually led or where I'm called rather than doing the rounds like what a lot of friendship circles kind of require or insist. I'm kind of like the happy wanderer that way. <laughs> I just... Oh, what's going on here? You know, it could be a little bit of a attention deficit, or it just could be that, uh, you know, that's what makes sense to me. She said here, I will feel good about what I'm doing for others, and then suddenly I come across someone that I can see feels I've totally missed their pain. I guess I would call this that superhuman pressure we sometimes feel. I miss so much stuff. I'm often the last person to find out good news and bad. <laughs> I'll come in kind of last minute and just comment when everybody else is already gone and it's been resolved, you know. Uh, I think that friends will understand that we don't have to be there for them. You actually don't have to be there for anybody. Maybe your children, <laughs> you know. Other than that, uh, and that's because, you know, you're entrusted with a little person. Um, my very favorite people have completely alle alleviated me from being there for them, even though I really like to do what I can and when I can and when I'm called. When she said here, I admit that sometimes I do, or maybe I make a judgment call on who needs me most of the time. I think it's funny that she felt like she had to write the word admit when she said, I admit that I sometimes do, when, uh, that she, you know, has missed someone's pain. Uh, I think it's funny that she wrote that word, a truly good heart might feel guilty for missing someone's pain. So again, I love your heart for thinking this way, but clearly, I, I don't think it's our job to fix someone. We can only do what's in front of us at the time, and there really should be no guilt or, or shame about that. I think what is happening to make good people feel overwhelmed um, is that they feel both extraordinarily needed in a hurting world, and they recognize that they're the last of a dying breed. When you think about some of the animals out there that are going extinct, and how beautiful they are, and you can't believe, you just cannot believe that that's going to be an end of an era for such a, a unique animal. Good people will fight a whole army with one sword, even though they're clearly unequipped to do so. It's really hard for good people to pair up with other good people in an army. They just feel like they take that weight on them so much, and so they feel responsible to help or to fix. And that's a good trait, but eventually makes you feel overwhelmed. And I have done blogs before on caregiver burnout because my mother looked after my, uh, her mom, or sorry, her stepmom, my grandmother, my dad's mom, uh, for many, many years. And then my mom also looked after a man in a wheelchair for 10 years. So I understand caregiver burnout. I see that. And it affected my mother's health. It affected, you know, her emotional stability. It affected a lot of things. And I believe one person can make a difference. I've always believed that. I've been part of that movement. But not if they're wounded. Uh, if we feel overwhelmed, it's really important to relieve ourselves of the guilt so that we can function at a high capacity again. I also think that uh, the truly hurting people don't know that they are hurt, that they're uh, tugging at people in this tug of war. They just don't know. Uh, if someone makes us feel guilty for not showing them enough love at the appropriate time according to what their needs are, what, at the timing of their needs, they don't always mean to do it. It's, it's not always a bad intention on their part. They're just hurting, and they just need somebody sometimes. You know, it's just anybody will do sometimes in that point of desperation. Um, usually they won't hate us <laughs> for missing it, though. And if they do, that's just asking way too much of a friendship. I really try not to uh, make helping people my responsibility. Rather, I just view it as it's just simply the right thing to do. It's to help people, it's just it's the right thing to do. Uh, most situations that arise come to us, though, in a very timely way. Uh, it's good to check in on our friends, but I don't think it's our job. 
I don't think we have to make the rounds. Uh, it's, it's kind of an analogy that belongs to somebody who's getting paid to do so. It's a job. I don't think that friendship should be a job. I think it's something we're called to do. And if we just are called to do the right thing at the right time, we should just do it. Uh, I really would like to see everyone let up on the control a bit. Just control everyone less. <laughs> or not at all would be good. It's kind of back to that let's cut each other some slack that I've said to you guys before. If you are someone who is feeling ignored, or if you're hurting, um, and because this has been me most of my life, and that's why I'm just giving this advice, is can I just humbly suggest you go into action mode instead of receiving mode? It's, it's a really weird uh, concept when you need something, and when you're just so hurting, you just need someone in your life. Instinctively, we go and try to get. You know, if our tank is uh, on empty, we go to the gas station and fill up. Everything in our life is, if our cup is empty, we got to fill it up. If our bank account is empty, we got to fill it up. Everything's about filling up, filling up, filling up. So it's kind of a hard stretch of our imagination to be able to say, I'm really hurting. What if I went and helped somebody? Because that gives us a sense of purpose, and it gives us some meaning in our life, and it makes us feel like we accomplished something. Um, I found giving to be a real tremendous pain reliever for my own pain if I can give to someone else. And we all have so much in common. I think that we can truly help one another instead of one person always taking, taking, taking. And again, a hurting person doesn't know they're doing that. They generally don't know. I've taken from a lot of people in my life when I was hurting. And it went into a very highly selfish mode when I was truly hurting. So I get that. I just don't think we have to give more than what we're able to. And we certainly don't have to make others feel guilty when they have very little energy or time to give to us. I signed off trying not to fall in the mud. <laughs> Game of tug of war. Uh, I signed off with a D. Ben Gurion quote, which uh, the context of this was a little bit more political and religious, but I kind of applied it just to what we're talking about today. He says, suffering makes a people greater and we have suffered much. We had a message to give to the world, but we were overwhelmed, and the message was cut off in the middle. In time, there will be millions of us becoming stronger and stronger, and we will complete the message. I thought that was a very cool quote. So I will sign off with you guys today, and uh, don't feel guilty for missing someone's pain. It's not your job. It's cool when you have a compassionate heart who will do that, but it just you are not superhuman. <laughs> But I love that your heart is thinking that way, because yes, we do need more compassionate people. But it's, it's just timely compassion. It's just when we're needed, when we're called. I keep it really simple like that. It seems to work for me. So I will tune in with you guys again tomorrow. And of course, from Whiskey Sour and me, rock on.